Boston, and we've all been in a situation where we don't think anyone understands us or how we feel, but we all have chances to get our personal message across. We need to ask questions for the good of ourselves and each other. A great example of this is at school. What is school really like? You know, it's surprisingly easy to find a picture of kids angry at school. We've all come home and heard, how was your day? We've all replied with fine, good, or something along those lines. But why? For keeping our mouths shut, not speaking up, that question is exactly what the world needs more of. Because either a teacher said something or did something, and that you didn't understand. And now you're freaking out about the fact that you have a test in two weeks, and you don't know this one thing. Or the teacher asks a question, and everyone but you raises their hand, but yet the teacher still called on you. Yes, you, almost as if raising your hand meant you knew the answer. Mm, you did calculations real quick. No, I'm doing it right. The teacher did. But no one will ever know these struggles if we keep them to ourselves and answer it with good and fine. There's a survey done on 2,000 Americans that showed 72% have felt a sense of loneliness and 31% say they feel it once a week. These questions about our day about our day, these are, these are our chances. People are, ta are trying to talk to us, make us less lonely, yet we don't answer. We don't give people the reason to care. Maybe if people start to expect answers, they will get answers instead of settling for one word answers. So next time you speak up and give them a real answer, like, it was horrible. I just realized, and I wasn't annotating the book, we're 30 chapters in, and annotating is 50% of my grade. I spilled grape juice on my white tail against social studies. It rained while I was testing my solar cooker. Literally, all you need for a solar cooker is salt. And I have five pages of math homework. So my day was great. How was your day? Which, all this stuff has happened, so I know what can ruin a day, or what you might need to get out. School is just a start, though. We need to be more open in every part of our lives. I saw this firsthand on a mission trip. I went to, I went to Pittsburgh this summer. The group I was in was helping a woman, and in our folder about her and what we were working on, we noticed that her husband, both of her son, and one of her daughter-in-laws had died. We walked into this house very nervous because this woman had every right to feel like the world hated her, no one cared about her. But I think that because she opened up her home to us and started sharing about her life, she was able to understand that we cared about her. Dr. Barton Goldsmith of Emotional Fitness wrote, there will always be problems in our lives, but sometimes we don't have the capacity to handle them all by ourselves. Getting a 360 view is impossible, and all you can see is what's going on. <coughs> and talking with another person can give you perspective. Just know that you can minimize your problems by discussing them with those you trust. Give your pain a voice, and let someone listen. You'll be amazed by how much weight can be lifted off your shoulders. So even if you don't believe me, a seventh grader, here's a dude that got his PhD to tell you this. So, listen to him. But what he's trying to say is that people take care of other people's problems. That's how we roll. Also, they probably, they might not have the same solution that you want, but these problems, but they might have gone through similar problems, and they have good ideas, or maybe just a different perspective, like you said. I've always thought that outbursts of anger come from almost throwing a balloon with too much air, and then all of a sudden it pops. If we answer these questions, we can slowly release air instead of filling it up to pop. And asking these questions can help others release air because you probably don't want to be popped on. So please, 